Today on ILDP Expedition 318, Wilkie's Land. Exploring the history of Antarctica. A one and a two and a three. Howdy, old y'all. It's fantastic. Arctic Circle, baby. Wonderful, fantastic. I cannot believe how beautiful this is. I just went up for the last 24 hours doing microbio samples, but I wouldn't miss crossing the circle for the world. Beautiful. A little bit butterflies in the stomach. <laughs> I want to come back again. You know, as we went over the, uh, the circle, I saw the mark on the water. Yeah, I feel like a better person. You can't beat it, crossing the circle. You come down here because the science is exciting, but it's not a bad place to work in terms of just beauty and natural history, the marine mammals, the birds. You know, I'm fascinated by the animals I see every day. And I make sure I spend time every day looking outside over the ocean to see what's there. We've now cored almost 2,000 meters into the seabed. It's not all in one spot, it's at a couple of different spots, but 2,000 meters and we've actually had great recovery. That's exciting. Even if the cruise ended now, it would be a success. And in fact, we're just a bit over halfway. The jump. As a sedimentologist on the ship, we see every centimeter of core that comes up. The core comes on deck, it equilibrates, warms up to room temperature, goes through some measurement systems, but then it goes into the splitting room, gets cut in half, and it comes to us, to the sedimentology team. So we gather around the split half of the core and we describe the features. We're usually the first to see if there's some big change in sedimentation or a change in color. Yeah, no, it is like tree rings, you know, and in trees we do some pretty simple things. We measure the thickness of the layers that forms as the wood grows, and in this case, the layers are a lot thicker. Actually, bring your camera, follow my finger right over to this. Look at this thing here. Maybe move over there and shoot at it back this way. So this layer here, it's maybe two or three millimeters thick. You know, that's probably the death event, the end of the summer in the Antarctic. We have four months of kind of bright, warm sunshine. Warm in this case, meaning temperatures slightly above zero. And then all of a sudden it gets dark, it gets cold, the ocean freezes, and the plants die. And when they die, you get this big dump. They call it the autumn dump event. This layer of plant debris sinks to the bottom and it makes a layer just like that. Sometimes there's a big change in color and it means absolutely nothing, you know? We'll argue about it for a few minutes. And then we take smear slides, little little samples of the mud, uh, put them under the microscope and see if it looks very different. Turns out sometimes there's a big color change with almost nothing identifiable in the slide when we look at them under the microscope. Uh, but we see all kinds of sedimentary features, evidence of ancient storms, if the icebergs are coming out dropping sand and, and gravel, even big boulders, that'll show up in the cores. So, uh, we look at every centimeter, we see all of that mud, all of the gravel, all of the sands, and we try to understand the story that appears in the sediments. Today on Penguin TV, ocean drilling for kids. I am not a pro. Oh, no, you're you're Christina the scientist. I am. I'm really glad to have you guys here so I can show you what happens yeah, once we get the cores from the drillers. What did you have for breakfast? Fish. We fish, 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 fish. And do, you, and, fish. And do you know what fish eat here in Antarctica? What do fish eat? What fish eat? Fish eat diatoms. Are you familiar with diatoms? Diatoms are tiny, tiny fossils. And this right here is the microscope that we use to look at them. So we use diatoms in the cores to tell things about the age of the sediment and to tell things about the environment that, was, that happened in the surface ocean when the sediment was deposited. So when the cores come from sand, they get split into two pieces by Chad and his friends. And then we have a big group of scientists here in the lab. Hey now, focus and every one of us applies our specialty, and by the time we leave the ship, we can tell you how old the sediments are, we can tell you the environment of deposition, 
We can tell you something about the way the seafloor has risen or fallen. We so, want diatoms. I would yeah. love to show you guys some diatoms, but you have to promise not to eat them. Ooh. We like to eat things. Oh, These are diatoms. Fish, oh, fish. Shh, shh. No, no, That's diatoms. Glass. That's glass. So here we go. Oh my gosh. Are you guys ready to see? I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. I want to see first. Here you go. She's oh, nice. Oh my gosh. Aren't wow. they beautiful? Wow. So I think what you should do is go down to the chem lab and visit Che. Che! Yeah. Che, yeah. che can tell you. Sh I know che. che can tell you a lot about the chemistry, but you'll have to be on your best behavior because Che doesn't tolerate any nonsense. Next week, yeah. let's go see Che. The science. Now this thing was created by the pressure of thousands of feet of ice pushing down on on rock and sand and mud and silt. So that sits at the bottom. You know, if we were to put this thing together here, it's like this. We go from this diatomaceous mud with these big layers, and then this stuff. It's never been done um, in Antarctica, where we find such hard stuff in direct contact with such soft stuff, and you believe that's really how it is at the seabed. We'll do the best we can to, to date this. That's one of the bits of information that we use to figure out when things do warm up, how fast can East Antarctica retreat? How fast can it melt? And if we know how fast it melted 11,000 years ago, it gives us some constraints on how fast it might melt in the next century or next thousand years. So that's some of the relevancy to uh, understanding the transition into the greenhouse world. I mean, it's kind of funny, you know, I always wanted to study climate change by looking at sediment records. That's what brought me down here in the first place. And I wrote my very first proposal to work here. And the reviewers said, wow, we don't even know how the sediment gets to the bottom. So how's he going to interpret climate change by looking at sediment cores? So, you know, they're right, actually. We don't have a working model for how this uh, record gets built up. I'm sampling uh, for the savior of mankind using nanofossils. You know, this program is kind of an oceanic equivalent of putting a man on the moon. It's highly complex technically, it's expensive. Uh, we don't have that many missions every year. It takes 10 years to get a mission from proposal to implementation to actually being out on the ship. And we're making fundamental discoveries about the planet. So uh, people from all over the world working together. And, and I think that's intriguing. <laughs> You know, I was kind of surprised to see him at first, I have to be honest with you there, but it turns out he's an okay guy. I mean, it's not just on the work side, too. He likes to listen to music, he makes music. His dancing's a little bit odd, but uh, I think I could actually learn a few moves from him. I'm not certain that he's really settled on what part of the diet works for him here. The food is really been difficult for him to digest. But you know, he carries on, he's a real trooper. I think it's pretty cool, you know, IODP. It could be the Intergalactic Ocean Drilling Program. He's starting to make very productive contributions to the science. I'd, I'd, I'd sail with him again anytime. Today on Gone in 30 Seconds with Stephen Picard. Very good. After exploring the distant worlds of hothouse climates, we've leaped forward in time into a geologic instant before today. It is here that the most incredible discovery has been made, literally a tree ring from the ocean. Unlike tree rings though, a multitude of measurements can be made on the sediments so we can begin to decipher the secrets of Antarctic climate change in near annual resolution going back to 10,000 years. You have to come, Captain Dunbar. Ice ice, Captain.